Hey viewer, let me let you in on a little secret. Video games make people mad. In today's gaming scene, this is most prevalent in online multiplayer games with a highly competitive edge, as we often see players lose their minds over things they can't control. I shoot him in the face, first person doesn't register. But there exists an antidote to this dilemma, rage games. Rage games embrace the idea of getting mad at a game, making it almost natural by having restricting yet responsive controls, making every mistake feel like the player's fault. I've played quite a lot of games that fall into this genre, but I've never played a rage game as captivating, entertaining, and alive as Will You Snail. And in this video, we're going to be analyzing Will You Snail, as well as what makes it stand out and the one man behind the entire four-year project. So join me as we dive headfirst into the best rage game you've probably never played. Let's start by introducing the selling point. Will You Snail is a precision platformer where an AI predicts your movement and spawns traps in real time to kill you. The trailer for this game does a much better job at introducing the main concept than I ever could, so here's a clip from that. You are a snail, and I am a god, capable of predicting every move you will make. <laughs> Too easy. I'm constantly calculating where I think you'll go next. Every laser beam I place in your way has been carefully thought about. This is Squid. He's the evil AI antagonist that you go up against, and is undoubtedly the most outstanding feature of the game. On top of the predictions, traps, and visuals, he provides an incredible amount of unique dialogue to the game. For example, when he kills you with one of his traps, he sometimes says something like this. Why would you download a platformer game if you're that bad at jumping? And it's not just deaths that Squid comments on, he has dialogue for pretty much every scenario in the game. And when I say every, I mean every. Wait a second, did you just voluntarily select the easiest difficulty? Not sure if I should shame you for that, or if I should applaud you for your self-awareness. Okay, I've made up my mind. Shame. Shame. Hey Snail, are you standing still or are you just moving very slowly? I can't tell. Oh, nice colors. Let's keep it like this. Here we go. The impossible jump, part two. Hey, this was meant to be impossible. And you are the one to do it first try. Really? Fine, let's see if you're any good at basketball. Apparently not. There's dialogue hidden in even the furthest recesses of the game. I remember when I was trying to record the sound effects in the game to use for editing this video, I had to mute Squid, and he caught me off guard with this. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. And the best part is, Squid never repeats himself. Every voice line is only said once, even if you exit and come back to a level. Actually came back to play more. <laughs> nice. To be honest, I already missed you a little. To make this possible, this game has over 1,300 voice lines. And they aren't even text-to-speech. The developer of this game recorded and edited all 1,367 voice lines himself, alongside, you know, making the entire game, but more on him later. The fact that Squid comments on everything you do, and all of said comments are completely unique, is what makes him the most lively NPC I've ever seen in a video game. And as well as Squid, the rest of the game is just as lively. The art style maintains a simplistic, neon-looking theme that's really well integrated into the rest of the features of the game. The way that certain variables or conditions, such as hit points, are visualized matches the art style perfectly. For example, on my first playthrough, when I entered the puzzle section, I thought the circles around these beacons were just for decoration, but they also serve the dual purpose of outlining the range of the beacon, which I didn't even notice until way later. And the sound design also fits incredibly well. I'm not too sure how to describe sound in general, but it sounds as simple as the game looks, almost kind of minimalistic and impactful in a way.
and the soundtrack is what ties it all together, which was composed by the developer, Jonas Tyroller. Tyroller? Tyroller? I don't really know how to say it. Anyway, the soundtrack is great. It manages to include the same two melodies in every track while still maintaining diversity between tracks. In the music industry, this is called... Uh... Leitmotif. A leitmotif. And it's a great leitmotif. At the beginning of the game, the leitmotif is directly presented in a standalone track. But as you progress through the game, the initial melodies can be found in just about every other track. In fact, the music that I used for the intro to this video is also part of the soundtrack, and has the exact same melody. Rewind to 0 minutes and 38 seconds and hear for yourself. But enough about the decorative parts of the game. How does it function in terms of gameplay? Well, since Will You Snail was built around a rage game, the game's a little bit hard. Here's the game on easy difficulty. <laughs> Now, you're probably thinking, but Mango, if that's just the easy difficulty, what do the other ones look like? Well, you see, this game doesn't follow the standard difficulty structure of easy, normal, hard, and very hard. Instead, we have infinitely easy, extremely easy, very easy, and easy, which is still the same structure, just named differently, so I guess I kind of lied. But I just wanted to point out the difficulty names. I thought they were kind of a nice touch. Are you really sure you can handle the easy difficulty? Well, okay. The game also has an automatic difficulty adjustment system to make sure players proceed through the game at a reasonable speed. But don't worry, you can turn it off if you want. And that's another thing about this game. It's really flexible to the player's preferences. Don't like the color scheme? You can change it. Think Squid looks weird? You can turn off his emotions. Trying to speedrun? There's speedrun settings with a speedrun timer and the ability to skip dialogue. Okay, so, skipping my voice lines. But back to gameplay. In terms of actually playing Will You Snail, the AI predictions force you to be, you know, less predictable, changing up your playstyle to try to trick the AI. Which isn't actually as annoying as it sounds, I found it to be incredibly fun. The controls are really simple, exclusively movement keys, which at first might make the gameplay sound a bit empty, but it prevents you from having to focus on too many things at once. As you'll often be facing many types of traps or obstacles at the same time, you'll usually be focusing more on the traps than the movement. The game's fairly short, as your first playthrough will probably take between 4-6 to six hours, but it's jam-packed with content. An extensive variety of mechanics are offered, making no two levels the same. In one level, you'll be escaping killer drones by flying around in a bubble, and in the next, you'll be playing basketball. Every time you even start to get bored, a cool new mechanic is thrown into the mix. Besides precision platforming, the game also features puzzles and story elements in between the main gameplay. You don't really have to focus on them if you don't want to, but I'd personally recommend it. The story isn't anything huge, but it's good. It's a story about AI, of course, and it starts to become more and more relevant to the game the farther in you go. For your species, it's just an endless cycle of pain and suffering and everything starts to connect once you put all the pieces together. And even after you beat the game, the fun doesn't end there. There's a ton of secrets hidden within the levels, a lot of which aren't accessible until you beat the game. Some of these offer extra variety in gameplay, such as a series of tower defense levels, I happen to know that strategic thinking is a big weakness of mankind. While some of them focus on the story, which usually stays in the background until you decide to look further, and the story starts to take the spotlight as you find out what's really going on. In fact, there's so much extra content sprinkled in, that even after beating the game, you'll still have two-thirds of the game left to explore and complete. Look hard enough, and you might solve all the secrets and get the true ending, which I would also go into detail about, but I don't want to spoil too much. So yeah, overall, really cool concept, entertaining gameplay with high variety, fitting art and soundtrack, awesome antagonist, a really well-integrated story, and despite this being a rage game, it treats the player quite well, allowing them to play the game however they please. And now, we're gonna talk about the one guy behind the entire game, Jonas Tyroler. 
Jonas started working on Will You Snail four years ago, and has been documenting the development on his YouTube channel ever since. It started out as a tiny little rage game, but evolved to incorporate elements of precision platforming, puzzles, and a story as time went on and the scope of the project increased. What's really impressive about Jonas's development of Will You Snail is not only how he manages to stick with it for four years, but that he made the entire game alone. It's not often you see a large-scale solo project Steam release in today's world, but Jonas managed to pull it off, as he did all the programming, art, animation, music, sound design, voice acting, and writing, which is pretty impressive given Will You Snail's quality. Well, it wasn't entirely a solo project. The Will You Snail community chipped in with the translations and playtesting, and some other people were involved with the voices of the other characters, but even with this considered, Jonas still made about 99% of the game, so my point still stands, it's still an impressive feat. I've been following the development of Will You Snail for about a year up until launch, and it was really interesting to see such a unique game come together from a developer's perspective. If you're into devlog type content, I definitely recommend recommend checking out Jonas's channel, link in description. I had high hopes for this game, and my expectations still managed to be exceeded. Will You Snail just got better and better the farther I delved into it, and I wasn't bored once the entire way through. If this sounds like your kind of game, I'd suggest checking it out. Games like this don't often get the recognition they deserve, which is one of the reasons I'm making this video in the first place. So if you like rage games or precision platformers, this one might be for you. I'll leave a link in the description for that too. So yeah, that pretty much concludes my very brief analysis. It was pretty short, I'll admit, as I was hoping to talk about a ton of other things about the game, but spring break is coming up and I'm leaving for vacation, so I kind of had to shrink the scope of the video to finish it up before then. I might make another video about Will You Snail, as I barely scratched the surface in this one. I was thinking something along the lines of a summary, so I could go into detail about my favorite specific elements of the game, so let me know if you'd like to see something like that. And that's pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed, dislike and don't subscribe if you didn't, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Here, look, I created a simulation of a human who is about to do something very special. Ah! That's so human. Okay, let's start from the beginning.